All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to a bonus episode of Locker Room. I actually teased this. That's what they call it in the podcasting business. <laughs> I'm a professional at this at this point. The uh, bonus episode of, uh, of Locker Room, what we try to do is redeem men's conversations, try to talk about the right things in the right ways. I got three men here who've spent a substantial amount of their lives in an actual locker room. Yes. Have you ever tried to sit back and calculate, like, how much time you spend in the gym or in the locker room over your, over your life? No. It's a pretty healthy percentage, I would bet, right? Yeah. So uh, real quick, why don't you uh, each introduce yourselves. Let's start down here with Josh. Just tell us uh, who you are and maybe just a little bit of, I brought you guys here today because you all have a, a unique shared experience of being uh, UK basketball players. And so uh, maybe where you grew up um, and whatever else you want to tell us real briefly, and then we'll dive in. All right, cool. Thanks for having me. Josh Carrier here uh, from Bowling Green, Kentucky, uh, West, you know, the western side of the state. We've uh, got like a whole western side of the state yeah, represented here. This is really man. weird. Yeah, yeah. It's fourth okay. region. Yeah, yeah cool. f- fourth region. <laughs> uh, but no, so uh, grew up in Bowling Green, made my way to Lexington in 2001. And so I spent okay. uh, five years here, four as a player, one as a graduate assistant. Mm-hmm. Uh, when I was a freshman, JP, the next person in line here, uh, was a senior. So, uh, he, he got to show me the ropes and introduce me to a lot of people and, and just a, a great person to be around. And then, you know, Ravi came in the following year, but, um, I, I'm, I live in Lexington now I'm back. I've been back for about six years now. I'm in the pharmaceutical world, um, uh, selling, uh, pharmaceutical, uh, drug for asthma. Uh, mm-hmm. I have the West Virginia, Virginia market. Okay. So very cool. appreciate you having me. Yeah, man. Yeah, um, Scott, it's an honor to be here. I wish you could have maybe hooked me up with some better guests to come <laughs> share the podium with. But other than that, man, I'm really the, excited the to be here. The trash talk element of this <laughs> is really the main reason I set this whole thing up. Um, so my name is J.P. Blevins. I, I grew up down around where Josh did in a place called Edmonton, Kentucky, so Medcalf County. Um, but yeah, you know, kind of grew up with this dream to go play ball at Kentucky. was able to kind of make that happen and uh, was up here from 98 to 02. Um Made a big kind of life decision, you know, at 28 years old, I put my dog in the car and drove 10 hours to Wilmington, North Carolina, it's Riceville Beach, to uh, to be a part of a startup bank. Uh, I'm still with that, uh, with that bank called Live Oak Bank, and, um, you know, I'm pretty active trading, I've been trading the market for 12 years. So between trading and banking, um, I did move back to Lexington two years ago. So this is home forever. Uh, You know, 10 years was long enough to be away from friends and family and around Dukies and Tar Heels. So (laughs) I I had to to get back to my comfort zone. That's right. That's right. And I am Ravi Moss. I am from Hopkinsville, Kentucky, 270 guy, uh, another <laughs> Western Kentucky boy. Yeah. Uh, second time on the podcast. That's Thanks right. For He's me back. Two to one on mm. the right year. Now, so. Don't need notes. <laughs> Some people do. To come Some talk people prepare. He brought a yellow legal pad Dude, in a book. And, and it is full. Man. I mean, goodness gracious. The preparation I admire. But um, I'm going to let him preach this someday. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> seriously. I, uh, you know, work for Striker right now. Um, Live here in Lexington, lived here, never left. I came here in 02. Uh, JP was leaving. Josh was a sophomore. And then Josh really was a grad assistant because he didn't want to leave me behind. That's he didn't right. know what to do. So he stayed my senior year as a grad assistant, which was great. And um, just living here, like I said, working for Stryker, raising, uh, raising the boys. All right. Uh, did, did you guys ever play each other in high school? Nah. None of you guys ever did. Never. Okay. Actually, I was in eighth grade, and I played for Warren Central High School, which uh-huh. I then transferred to Bowling Green the following year. But uh, Blevins came to Bowling Green, played at Warren Central's gym. We had a guy named Anthony Grundy. Oh, And Grundy. Uh, Rick, really Rick, yeah. Rick Bettino was in the crowd yeah, for the game. Yeah. And, that was uh, pretty wild. And JP and, and Grundy put on a show. Okay. And mm-hmm. I was able to, to get in for... Uh, a brief moment, got a shot off, and then I was, you know, back on the bench. <laughs> but, but I got to see, you know, two really, really good players Very uh, cool. play. Very cool. Well, it is kind of unique. You're all from the western side of the state. So, yeah. you know, I mean, I tell people, you know, Kentucky's got some different vibes to it. You know, I mean, you've got yeah. central Kentucky here in the bluegrass portion of the state, eastern Kentucky. Northern Kentucky is its own thing, and then yeah. Western Kentucky is kind of its own thing, and then you got Louisville, which Indiana can just 
have, you know. So I always try to tell people, like, I'm actually from South Central Kentucky. He's from West. Yeah, he's They're way like, out no, there. all y'all are from Western Kentucky. Uh, like, yeah. They just bunch yeah, of, we, I guess at this point. If I'll we got to get it. on that parkway, like <laughs> you're in Western Kentucky, man. Right, that's right, the way. Right, that's right, the way right, we look right, at it. it. So, well, hey, um, I'll, I'll kind of start asking some open-ended questions. Whoever can wants to dive in can dive in, but. I would like to start with kind of reflecting on what was it like at the front end of coming to Kentucky, you know, so you grow up, you know, you have hopes and dreams that are basketball oriented and then Kentucky is where you are coming. Like what was your thought process? What were those feelings like? That kind of thing. Whoever wants to jump in can jump in. So I'll start off. I mean, you know, so I grew up in a you know really small town, and it's just like everybody grows up in rural Kentucky. You know, you live for that Kentucky ball game to come on, and life shuts down. Nobody calls. I mean, that's that's how I grew up. And <laughs> we've talked about we've it. Talked my, about my that, dad right? to this day. If somebody calls during a Kentucky game, I mean, it's like you have shot his dog. Yeah, you know, right. it's like what? Who is that? And what could they be thinking? <laughs> so. When I was in the fourth grade, my dad sent me to Lexington to the University of Kentucky basketball camp, and this was Rick Pitino's first year. And so you remember the excitement around the program when he injected, they start running and mm-hmm. pressing and shooting threes. And so I was kind of really coming onto the scene of being aware about that time. So, I mean, it really got in my blood, mm-hmm. right? And so I just, you know, fourth grade, I went home and like, man, that's what I'm going to do. So, I mean, I kind of grew up with going to my court in my backyard with kind of that vision, man. I, I, I want to go. That was my dream. I knew mm-hmm. it. And um, so to make that thing happen was uh, was pretty special the day that Patino called and offered a scholarship. And, you know, look, I, I think, you know, you get up here and you go through it. Um, obviously, there's the cool part, right? You know, that jersey's got your name on the back of it and you're running out to the fight song at Rupp. You know, mm-hmm. like, you can't. Like, that stuff that will be with you forever. But it doesn't always go as you kind of think, right? You know, I didn't play any of my freshman year. I had a pretty decent sophomore year. Junior year was awful. Mm -hmm. Get hurt my senior year. And I kind of left, which is, man, that that thing didn't really go Mm -hmm. how I wanted to. I accomplished this huge dream that I dreamed about. But actual in it, you get to a point where you're like, is this it? Mm -hmm. Like, this can't be. Like, I know I've spent my life chasing this thing down, but this doesn't fill me up in that way. So, I, you know, I, these guys might have a little different experience. Yeah, did, did each of you have a moment like that where you hit a moment of like, is this it? And did that happen while you were here or did that take longer for you guys? Yeah, so I want to circle back to your mm-hmm. first question. Yeah, uh, it was a little different for me. My my dad was an All American at Western Kentucky. Yeah, you, you and, grew up with that, and so You're I had that. Di- part, I had yeah. that dynamic. I had a cousin that was a manager at Louisville, so I got exposed to a, a lot of different colleges and and for many different reasons. And so my dad was always keep your options open. Uh, but it was interesting, you know. You watch everyone uh, watch Kentucky and be the fanatic that they are, and that's why this program is special. And um, and so as as I go along the recruiting process, I'm mm-hmm. trying to keep my options open, and it just continued to you had circle. Big, you had some big schools in the mix. So UCLA, yeah. Kansas, Kentucky, Stanford, like, you know, yeah. the, the big schools. But it always continued to circle back to home. And my family is super important to me, and, and I wanted them to be able to come and watch me play and, and me be able to spend time with them throughout the year and not just on two or three different occasions across the year. I knew I wanted to live in Kentucky when I was done. So, you know, when you put that that jersey on and, and you get embedded in this program, there's going to be opportunities that are going to be given and provided that you wouldn't get if you yeah. would have gone to another school. To answer your second question, I think, you know, same thing as Blevins. You know, you, you get a chance to go to Kentucky – you think you can play in the NBA. Like right. that's just the reality right. of it. You you come here, you have maybe that goal of of playing at the next level and and it didn't go as planned for me either. You know, I come in and we're preseason number one. Uh before the season even starts, we're loaded from top mm. to bottom. You had, you know, JP and Tayshawn Prince as seniors kind of leading the way and and man, I, I didn't I didn't play. It was really really hard to to get minutes. Tubby was very hard on his freshman. Mm-hmm. He didn't want uh, to to maybe give an opportunity to those <laughs> young guys. Such a different paradigm, right? Such yeah. a different story than it is today. And and look, after my sophomore year, Robbie can tell you. I mean, I was at home. I, I packed everything up from the Wildcat Lodge and took it home with me. And I was like, I'm not going back. I'm going to go find a place where I can play. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I felt like I was putting in all the effort and putting, you know everything into 
basketball and I felt like I deserved a chance and I just wasn't getting it. And at that, at that moment, it was like, this isn't everything. Mm. It, basketball is not everything. And so that's when my relationship with, with Jesus got stronger mm. and, you know, through some of those tough times. And I'm not saying I gave up on basketball. I ultimately went back. Sure. I continue, continued to work hard, but it was just different. Yeah. I had a different kind of mindset from that point on. Ravi, you, you have a little bit of a different journey. You walked yeah. on to begin with, right? Yeah, I yeah. wasn't as good as these guys. <laughs> <laughs> I was not, uh, I'll call myself a late bloomer, I guess. <laughs> but I was not highly sought after. I was not highly recruited at all. Like, I was going to go to Transy and play for Coach Lane. Yeah. Um, that was kind of my my career path. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I mean, I thought I was pretty good, but just didn't get Hey, you uh, were smart enough to go to Transy, though, which these two yeah, definitely, exactly, definitely not. Exactly. So. See, I, I, wasn't <laughs> I, I was, listen, I was, I was a mathlete, not really an athlete. Gosh. So I, I had good grades, and luckily— um, Luckily, Brandon Stockton was playing a couple games before mine, um, or the either the game before mine or the game after mine. Glasgow, uh, See, yeah, Glasgow, Glasgow yeah. yeah. And he'd already signed mm -hmm. here in Kentucky. He was going to be Mister Basketball, and Coach Smith was there to watch that. And I played OJ Mayo. Yeah, and he was in the seventh grade, and I had a good game over in scored, West Virginia. Yeah. yeah, in West Virginia, and I had. At 39 points that game, like 21 rebounds, and yeah. Coach had seen me. And then I came up and played Catholic, and Brian Smith was there. Uh -huh. So Coach Smith had seen me, um, and the fact that I was a decent athlete and had good grades, he was like, yeah, sure, you can walk on. And <laughs> So I just walked on. So I yeah. was just— um, So what was your expectation? Like, what was your thought man, process when you came? I, I didn't hmm. know. I didn't really have an expectation. Like, I, I, I liked Kentucky basketball, but I wasn't— like one of my closest friends was Andre Buckner, and he went to Duke. Right, and I, he was a senior when I was a freshman. So I was watching Duke and rooting for Duke. <laughs> I know, I know. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I know. I you said that I think but on here before. Yeah, I so. have. But like, um, so my mom was the one that said I was going to go to Kentucky. Mm. She was like, "Oh no, you gonna go to Kentucky?" Yeah, my mom is crazy, and um, but it it actually ended up working out. So yeah. So by. I mean, what what was your minutes looking like by the time you were a senior? Man, I was getting, you know, I probably got 18, 20 minutes a game, wouldn't you say? Like, probably got around 18. Yeah, I mean, I remember. Started over half the game. So yeah. Rob, Robbie started, half started hitting them. shots a lot, you know, that kind of thing. So so for you, I mean, you, you kind of had this real gradual yeah. kind of climb. You had a lot of ups and downs. Mm -hmm. You had ups and downs, you know. So, so did you get more or less enamored with Kentucky basketball the longer you were a part of it? Um, I say I got more, mm -hmm. um, because I mean, I love basketball is my first love. Mm -hmm. I still love basketball yep. to this day. And after two Achilles ruptures, I'm still trying to play basketball just yeah. because I don't know. It's just something about the game that yeah. I just love. And, um, uh, the passion and the people here, um, they appreciated that. They loved that. And, yeah. you know, I played hard just because I, I wanted to play hard, you know, it's just because the way it was. So, um, like the more minutes I got, the more involved I got in it, the more mm -hmm. I was like, man, this is awesome. This mm -hmm. is awesome. And I did want to play at the next level. And I, you know, thought yeah. I would get to that point where I could do that. So I'd say, but I got, it's uh, funny how, it's funny how things work out though, because yeah. JP, his senior year, my freshman year, that was ended up being team turmoil. And right. if we hadn't have had all the turmoil, yep. there probably wouldn't have been a spot for Ravi to even mm -hmm. no question it be on the roster. We had we had a lot of roster turnover and right. and uh and that opened up a door and, and you know, Tubby needed high character kids. Right. Mm -hmm. That kind of roster turnover was really uncommon at that yeah. stage in college. It's like six basketball. guys. Mm -hmm. it's like six five guys or six guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, real quick, what was each of your all's last game in a Kentucky uniform? Mm. Sorry to take us to this this place, but yeah, we uh, mine was uh, we played Juan Dixon and those guys from uh, yeah. Maryland, and they won it that year. They beat us in the uh, I guess it was the Sweet Sixteen that year. Um, so Lonnie Baxter, mm -hmm. um, you know, you had Juan Dixon, Steve Blake. Yep. Uh, that mm -hmm. team went on to win it. Yeah, uh, they got Fox. us in the Sweet Sixteen in Syracuse, I believe. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. my mine was 
Michigan Double State. overtime defeat yeah. against Michigan State in Austin, Texas, and I'll never forget. I mean, that's, that's when Sparks. Shot. That's when yeah. Sparks was you know on the line or off the I line. Watched and the replay for ten minutes. It, yeah. it was it was our opportunity. We had, I mean we just had an absolute mm-hmm. squad. We had a lot of momentum, and it just I mean a roller coaster of a game. We had so many missed opportunities, mm-hmm. but um, that's how it happened. So it was sad. Uh, just just a few seconds away from a final four. Yeah, and I know your answer, but go ahead. <laughs> go yeah, ahead. That was that, I felt like my career was over with that game. Mm-hmm. But um I played the next year. We lost to Connecticut uh in Philly. I think it was the round of like thirty two. It was early, wasn't mm-hmm. it? We sucked that year. We mm-hmm. weren't very good. Yeah. Yeah. So so you go to the locker room and you know this is it. It's the last time I'm taking off this Kentucky jersey. What was that like? So, you know, I think a lot of athletes go through this, and it's funny you call this thing locker room, right? Because I kind of think the locker room is a a great place to kind of come and reflect, right? Like, what was working in the first half? What adjustments have to be made for the second half? Mm -hmm. Robbie's guy's got 20 that he's guarding. We got to get Robbie (laughs) off that guy, right? You know, I think think good, good coaches are the ones that can really make adjustments, and you know, I think life's like that a little bit too. I think, you know, if I think, if I, you know, reflecting in that moment, you know, things come to an end and I wasn't right there, but mm-hmm. not long after you kind of come to this point, man, I'm like, Robbie, I fell in love with the game. Mm-hmm. I wanted to be on my court every night. Mm-hmm. I love this. And you realize like, man, sports is awesome. Basketball is awesome. It's a terrible God. Yep. I just, almost every life lesson, my character development came through sports and through chasing down a big dream. I learned work ethic. I learned what a true commitment is, how to deal with adversity, mental toughness, how to be selfless, how to be a good teammate, Tom, all this stuff. So sports is wonderful, but when your identity and that is your foundation, you're setting yourself up for a crash. Mm -hmm. And I felt that Mm -hmm. at the end when I took that final jersey off is like, man, I, As you say all the time from stage, when a good thing becomes an ultimate thing, it becomes a destructive thing. Mm -hmm. Basketball was an ultimate thing for me. And I had to deal with the consequences of now it's over. Where do I go? Now what? Yeah. So did it hit you fast or slow or both? I I think for me at that point, I mean, it's a different feeling. You know, the previous three years, you you get beat. It's sad no matter what. The Mm -hmm. season's over. You had all these high expectations. And then you're like, you get a week or two off and then you're back in the gym. Yeah. And so it's different. You know, your senior year, you don't know, am, am I going to go get a real job? Am I going to go to grad school? What, what's next? Right. And so to, to his point, uh, it's just a, it's a different feeling, but it's also, you know, at that level, it's hey, coach makes a few comments. We got to rush because the media has got to come in and talk to you. So you've got to kind of gather all of your emotions mm, and man. pull it, pull it all in. And, um, you know, I don't know as a 22 year old if if I'm really getting all of it. I mean, there was so mm-hmm. much going on. You kind of you're kind of yeah. numb. Yeah, you're a young man. I mean, that, yeah. that's young to have all that coming at you. That was it for you? I mean, I cried, of course. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was tough, man. I was. Um, I think I think it was tough because the the year we had was so tough. Like we just didn't have a good year, mm-hmm. and you know. It was like you never got to a Final Four, like finally realizing like all the – it was a culmination closing, and it's like there's yeah. no there's no more. This is it. You've done it. Like there's nothing else, mm-hmm. and there's nothing you can do about it. So it was it was, uh, it was, was tough for me, and I'll never, I'll never forget. I was – I hadn't taken my jersey off yet. I was sitting at my locker, and I went and I went to the bathroom and came back, and I before I went back with the other guys in the locker room, I was just kind of had my head, hands on the sink, and I was crying. And Joe Crawford walked up and looked, and and he was like, "It's gonna be all right, homie. You know, you good. You know, Joe's goofy. Yeah. You good. You gonna be all right, bro." And I was like, "Man, but it's it was really <laughs> funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's funny that I saw him a couple years later, and it was over, and he mm. was done. And he was like, "Yo, I I got it. I get it. Like I understand yeah. why you were, what was going on there." So. Yeah. Yeah, get the man a tissue. Can we get him a tissue? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm crying, man. (laughs) Sorry, man. It's like when you got, you know, you're you're 20, you got an 18 year old coming over to console you. You know, it's gonna go great, (laughs) right? right. right. So, what did that search for, you know, identity look like for you guys? Like, so here we are. You know, basketball's been, you know, maybe ultimate, or if nothing else, 
highly significant. And now, you know, nobody's going to the NBA, you know, so, so what did that search for? Who am I? Who's Josh? Who's JP? Who's Robbie? What did that look like? How long did it take you? That kind of thing. For 22 years, for 22 years, basketball was my life. It was Josh Carrier. And so I wanted to stay in it. Mm. And so for me, I had an opportunity to stay around a little while longer and continue to try to figure it out. Mm. Uh, got a grad degree, was a, a graduate assistant coach, thought I wanted to go that route. And uh, so it was a great opportunity. And it was really good for me, for someone who put in all the time and felt like I, I deserved a better opportunity to actually sit in the coaches' meetings and listen to them talk about the players and strategize and figure out who plays and when and why. Mm. And it gave me a, a, a way better perspective. And it probably gave me some peace of mind and peace of heart um, because of some of the things that happened over the four years I yeah. was there. So really cool. Um, uh, you know, just, you know, basketball to, to Robbie and JP's point. I mean, it was something that I did every single day, multiple hours a day, and, uh, it wasn't going to just go away. Mm. And so I got to hang around a little longer and, and, and live the dream another year. Yeah. But you guys. So I think, you know, when I hung it up, I was, I was, you know, pretty lost just from, you know, this is the one thing that I've known. And I, I think there's a lot of people, whether you work for 30 years and retire and your identity is in your work and you, you look, you know, you see this all the time with athletes, like, you know, man, like fame is fleeting, man. You know, you see these dudes that are at the corner of the bar for 30 years talking about the good old days. I was like, I don't want to be that. Yeah. <laughs> Even yeah. though I don't know what's next, man, I'm not going to be one of these dudes that uh, there is more to me than than that. Yeah. But there was, you know, some real reflecting of who am I without a basketball in my hands. And, you know, I, I, I came to know Jesus, you know, in high school, but there's certainly peaks and valleys of that progression of a relationship and deepening of that relationship. And certainly into my late twenties, it became deeper and deeper. And I, you know, I remember even, even praying pretty specifically, Lord, help me find something that I'm as passionate about mm. as basketball, because I went, you know, I started doing pharmaceutical sales out of college just because a few of my buddies had done it. You know, the players, right. You play on your name. That was fine. It's great. It's awful. I, I hated it. Yeah. You know, I went to Frankfurt for four years and I was like, I remember getting on the elevator in Frankfurt and being like, the life is truly being sucked out of me mm -hmm. every and like, I don't know where I'm going, but this ain't it. And so like, you just, <laughs> you go through a few of those iterations and you don't really know. And then, you know, I lost my dad, my, mm -hmm. you know, 27, 28, and was really doing some soul searching about the next move. And, you know, I, I realized that whatever it was, you know, whatever, I, if I found something in work that I even was passionate about, I have to at least learn the lesson that, you know, I became, I was, my identity was performance and achievement based. And that was hardwired into me from achieving through sports as a kid. Like, look at my worth is based on how I perform, yeah. how many points I score. So whatever I do next, I just have to go in with this expectation of, man, if I don't get the foundation right, I'm setting myself up for a crash. And luckily I found something that um, really worked out. And, but anyway, that was mm -hmm. a little bit of my transition. Yeah. Took yeah. you a while. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Took me a while. Took me a long time. Uh, I mean, I thought I was going to go and, and play overseas. Yeah. So that was the initial plan. It was yeah. assigned with an agent, and I was getting ready to go and pack my bags and go travel the world. Yeah. And that, that was like when I figured out I wasn't good enough to play in the NBA, I was like, well, I can still have a pretty good life and go overseas yeah. and travel and go to all these different places and learn different languages. But uh, found out that, nope, I'm not going to do that. Uh, Braylon was coming. Happy birthday, Braylon. Today is his birthday. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so 15 today. 15 yeah. today. You do the math, and there, there's yeah. it. that's it. So he was uh, right after college, and then I did. I got into the pharmaceutical game like yeah. right out of college because I had to pay for a kid. Figured out. Yeah, yeah. so um, even with all this, you know, like it was, it was, still, um, it was still a process mm -hmm. as far as finding myself, and I really didn't find myself again until – like not long ago recently because mm -hmm. um, I was just trying to make money and trying to get stuff. I mm -hmm. just figured I'll be successful if I just go get stuff. If I make some more money, if I do this, you know, I, I'll i be happy. And it's not the case. Yeah. And it um, wasn't until not long ago uh, when I really understood and found the value in, you know, myself and in, 
that was, you know, realizing who I am in God and mm -hmm. in his Im in his image. And uh, you helped me get there. I appreciate that, brother. Wow. Uh, There's been some other men that have and, uh, <laughs> been yeah, a huge lot, part of that, too. A lot of other stuff. But yeah, it's lot cool of to see how God works by, you know, leveraging relationships from the past, current, you know, relationships you never see coming, you know, to, to help somebody along the way. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, each of you guys are followers of Jesus, and you've all, I think you all pretty much kind of grew up going to church, yeah. and mm -hmm. all of you have had yeah. that experience. Yeah. So, but you definitely talk about those peaks and valleys and things like that, you know, share whatever you're willing to share, you don't have to share anything you don't want to share, but what, what was like the lowest point for you, maybe during your college career in regards to your relationship with Jesus? Mm. Uh. Man, that one's that one's tough. That that's one's a, that's um, a big one. So for me, I think you know, my, you know, I kind of was really looking forward to my senior year. Um, we, I thought we had a really good shot to win it. Yeah. You know, Tayshawn was carrying the load. Bogans was a junior. Yeah, both of them came back. Both of them came yeah. back. Jason Parker, mm -hmm. who ended up tearing his knee up, mm -hmm. but was just killing people. Yeah. You know, you got Fitch was playing well. You got Chuck Hayes down here mm -hmm. banging. I mean, like we. The pieces, the pieces were there. And, <laughs> God, um, Eric Daniels on that team. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was on there, um, playing his nineteen seventies game. Just <laughs> old man, old man game. <laughs> like, uh, he was effective, but um, so I think I had really, you know, any disappointment that I had felt as a junior, I had kind of all put mm. on the hope of like this the last hope, dreams and expectations. Hope, yeah. yeah, that's right. And then, Train so that. I end up. You know, I'd won the starting job, so um, and I turned my ankle, high ankle sprain, right before the two exhibition games. So I'd had a really good summer, but then that ankle, you know, it takes two weeks and it throws you out of rhythm, and you're starting to play games. So that kind of, and then I then I come back and then I break my wrist against Indiana. So like all this hope of any kind of disappointment I had, I kind of like, mm -hmm. man, no, I'm gonna I'm gonna finish well. I'm gonna fit. This is the way we're gonna go out. When I realized like. I'm not gonna be back till February. Like, man, that's it. Probably mm -hmm. that's the most. That was a low point. Mm -hmm. That was because you know you be carry. Mad. You know, man. It was the hard part. Is like when you're a Kentucky kid too. You carry the weight of, mm -hmm. man. Everybody you know is watching the game. Right. You're representing your family. You're representing your hometown. You know, and you want not only for yourself but to make all these people proud. Right. And if there's a, you know, so it's just an added weight if things don't go well that you yeah. just feel. And uh, I felt that my senior yeah. year. I think there was a real low point there. Yeah. yeah, I think for me, it goes back to my sophomore year. You know, started the year uh, pretty well. We were in Hawaii and, uh, you know, came off the bench, hit a couple threes against Arizona State, played, you know, 10, 12 minutes. I thought, okay, this is the start of something. Mm -hmm. Next game, Virginia plays primarily zone. So I got an opportunity to play probably more minutes than – um than usual and uh so i'm like all right off to a great start it's gonna it's gonna continue to get better i'm gonna have that opportunity and then it just went kind of crazy from there you know like i wouldn't play the next game mm -hmm. and then i might play eight minutes and then he might put me in the you last minute know, of the game yeah. you just never knew and it was really hard as much as you prepare yeah. it's really hard to be ready for those types of situations and so i was i was a lot of emotions i was mm. frustrated i was bitter i was mad um you know and and to jp's point like i'm hearing it from home i'm hearing it from my dad i'm hearing it from fans you go to you go to class or you go anywhere in lexington you're hearing it from you know, the people in the community. And that's tough. I mean, as a 19 year old, like, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm like what is going on here? And, um, so really, really tough year. And then, so at the end, you know, and, and look, and I, I look back and I'm like, man, I was being very selfish. I was being very immature because you look back and we went 19 and 0 in the sec, mm -hmm. 19 and 0, we won 20 some consecutive games. And then we ran into a bus all named Dwayne Wade. He had yeah. a triple double to beat us, to go to the final four. And when you look back, you're like, man, maybe, you know, maybe, I didn't deserve to play like I thought I did. Yeah. And so I packed all my stuff up, bitter as can be, yeah. um, ready to to have a, a fresh start. And the Lord had another plan, man. Mm -hmm. he, said, he said, go back and finish what you started. Um, trust me. And uh, and that's what I did. And, and again, my relationship with him got stronger. Uh, obviously, I mean, I'll be honest, I didn't make all the right decisions those yeah. next two years. But 
Wait, uh, you were 19 and 20 and you didn't make all the right decisions? That's weird. <laughs> that's like, correct. Strange. But, 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 but staying grounded, yeah, just right. staying grounded in him, uh, it could have been a could've lot worse. Could have been worse, yeah. 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 yeah, I still, we've talked about this, I still blame that Keith Bogan's ankle sprain yeah. on that bus. That was, that, that, that was a rough that one, man. Was, was bad. How about you? That was it. Um, man, my low point in college, I don't know, man. I didn't. Listen, everything was cake. I was a walk on. Mm. I was getting to play. I was. It's such an interesting dynamic yeah, for it's, for it's, you guys and how that was was different. What the the media was particularly brutal to you. I mean, they were yeah. they were hard on you, bro. Yeah. And I mean, so you guys all go from being. You know, you talk about representing your town. Well, most of the time, your town was proud of you in high school, <laughs> yes. middle school. Right. Like, the That's newspaper right. clippings were all positive. I can't imagine there was a ton of, like, negative feedback. Fortunately, for all you guys, you know, you were before social media really <laughs> right. took, yeah. took uh, shape. But took took shape. But mm -hmm. what was that like to deal with that level of negativity? I'm interested to hear from you. I know you all experienced it in different mm -hmm. ways, but... I let the two positive guys. Go yeah, I'm not gonna lie, man. I, it, it, message boards were still around. Yeah, that's true. And it was ridiculous, mm -hmm. man. Like it, cats paws. Yeah, yeah, all that type yeah. stuff. They'd get on and they just talk. And I mean, it, 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 they just forget the, their kids, mm -hmm. like 18, 19, 20 year old kids, and mm -hmm. you're over here talking about this and that. And oh, well, I could do this, and he needs to. Why is he playing minutes? And he can't hit a shot or this, mm -hmm. that, and I was like, man. Shut up, dude. But it, my it, dad it's hard to yeah. wrote a letter to Tubby. Oh, gosh, <laughs> yes. That's my family, right? right you know, right, so like right. if you gotta believe that if my you know, uh, so and I don't mind calling my dad out on this podcast, but I'll never forget when he told me that. I was like, You did what? <laughs> he's like, Pat it, pat it, wrote a letter to Tubby. He's like, What do you think he's gonna do with it? Yeah, you yeah. think he's gonna read it? You think he's gonna frame it? You think he's gonna alter his plans based on what you said, Gary Nickel? You know, that kind of thing. Push the ball. But if there's if that's if there's one dude like that in my my family, how many families across the Commonwealth are there like that? You know, yes. media stuff for for you, JP? Yeah, yeah. I mean, thank goodness I wasn't in the social media age, man. I am sure. thankful for that. But you can just feel it, right? Like you can feel when it's going well, mm. when it's not. And there's just nowhere to go. Like, I mean, yeah, I love this place, but this place is centered around Kentucky basketball and Kentucky athletics, mm. and so there's no escaping it. There's nowhere to go. Yeah. To deep to recharge. Yeah. To Can't hide. to yeah. there's nowhere to go and separate this. You're always surrounded by mm -hmm. it. And so, you know, the reprieve thing is like hard to find when you're in the middle of it and it's not going well and you're dealing with all that. So that you know, that's just it's what makes this place special too, though, is like people care so much. We'll never let this program be anything other than elite. And that's got its positives and it's got its negatives, yeah. right? So we're talking about some of the negatives of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's interesting. And, and it's it's funny, as I get older, I, I talk about those things more and more. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm young, I act like, oh, that ain't no thing. It doesn't bother me. It didn't bother me. And in all reality, it, it hurt. It hurt. And, yeah. and so, you know, but you look back and you think, okay, there were a lot of high expectations for even Robbie coming in in the situation he did, you're on the roster. You need to contribute in yeah. one way or the other. And well, so, it got it did get to the point where when he came in a game or when he was starting, it was like he better make every shot. You yeah, know, I sure. mean, if he missed a three, it was like, well, what? You know, yeah, it, live and dying on every shot. And I know it felt that way for you for sure. For, and it goes back to you, you don't, never know when you're going to play. Right, so you, you better capitalize. And, and I mean, look, when you sit for two hours and then you get put in at the end of the game, yeah, I'm jacking it up. Right. I'm shooting it. Right. But it's probably not going to be a good probability right. of it going in because right. so number one, I don't have my I'm legs. Not, I'm not warm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm cold. I'm I'm mad. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I'm, I'm you know. So yeah. there, there's all these things to it. But um, but no, you know, Facebook came in my senior year, towards mm -hmm. the end of my senior year, and you know, I'll never forget. Uh, Josh Carrier doesn't deserve a scholarship. Uh, group was formed group, and uh, yeah, yeah. So it was a group on there, and and you know, it had yeah, it had about. 45 or 50 losers on there that followed Man. it. But, but like those, those things hurt, you know, as a kid and you're seeing it. And to Robbie's point, there were, there wasn't social media, but there were message boards, there were chat yeah. boards. Mm -hmm. And you better believe we were stupid enough to oh, read yeah. it. Yeah, you know, like right. we, we got on there and we wanted to know what people were saying about it. So, mm -hmm. so it hurt. But the more I talk about it, you know, uh, I, I think the better it gets. And, and you put everything in perspective. It's like, look, 
number one, that what this is what makes Kentucky basketball special for better or worse. These people care, mm -hmm. and and it makes it special. Number two, like, look, I was Mr. Basketball. Mm -hmm. I, I chose Kentucky over some of the biggest programs in the mm -hmm. in the country. So it's not like I was some bum off the street yeah. that they just took because I was a Kentucky yeah. kid. And um, you know, so you, you put those things in perspective, and um, and they just they make you stronger. And yeah. look, they make you uh, they make you get into Word. They make you get into the Bible. Like, yes, you have questions. You question things. You might get mad at, at God, but at the end of the day. Um, those things, those tests, uh, and how you respond it is a really, really good life lesson moving forward. It's interesting how there's so much growth that can occur once you acknowledge that it hurt. Mm -hmm. Like once you can kind of just put down that pride mm -hmm. and go, you know what? Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> that hurt, man. That cut deep, and I didn't like it. You know, well, yeah, you're a human being. You know, I would expect nothing less. But there is such a temptation as men, and I've done this many times in my life, to go, oh, it lost no sleep over that. <laughs> you know, truth mm -hmm. is, you know, we we tend to take, take things a lot harder than what we'll ever let on, right? You mm -hmm. know, so if you were able to kind of look back or go back and advise your younger self, you know, your days during being here at UK, what what would you tell that young man? It's, you know, freshman year, he's about to go out to his first practice. What would you say to that young man, you know, what would be your challenge to him? Because there's some young men listening right now that could – that could benefit from those yeah. words. I, I think for me, I'm a pretty private person, and there's no privacy when you're playing at Kentucky. And so when I was not in the gym or in class, like I wanted to be kind of in my hole. I wanted to be away from everything. And and I didn't put myself out there to maybe um, influence others. Mm. Um, and I really wish, looking back, I would have taken advantage of that platform more. Mm -hmm. And unless somebody just wore me out and begged me to go and speak here or, or show up here, I, w I was not doing it. Mm -hmm. I was not, I wanted to be a, as far away from people as possible. And so looking back, it's like I had a platform and for better or worse, whether you love me or you hated me, people were going to listen, mm -hmm. you know, because I was a UK basketball yeah. player and I didn't take advantage of that like I probably should have. Mm -hmm. I think I think my thing would probably be, you know, look, man, go take your talent and ability and maximize it. Like, you know, I'm not a guy that says, like, I love chasing down a dream growing up. I, I actually think we honor God when we take the gifts and the talents he's given us. And we Whatever go you do, work them. out of with hey, all your man, heart. Just yeah. go, man. Go dream and yeah. go stretch and go grow. But I think the thing that I would want someone young to listen to is go do that. But at the same time, no, it's just not who you are. Mm -hmm. And your identity comes from the fact that you've got a father in heaven that created you, <laughs> that loves you, knows how many hairs are on your head, and that is where your worth and identity come from. So go chase down any dream you want, but the expectation going in isn't this makes me whole right. if I get there or this sustains and fulfills because that is, I think, the biggest lie that I think everybody buys into is if I can just achieve that or do that, then I'm good. Yeah. And my first half of my life, would that's the biggest lesson I've, yeah. I've got to take away from it. And then you mm -hmm. get it and you go, <laughs> I still don't feel whole. I still don't feel that's like, right. you know, so I got the thing. And that's why your all stories are, you know, I think so helpful to sit down and talk about is because if ever there was a thing that young men growing up in Kentucky would go, if I could get that, that would be, that'd be awesome. That would mm -hmm. be, the, you know, playing ball. Kentucky is one of those things for sure. You know? So what about you? What would you tell your younger self? Yeah. It's, uh, I would say work harder. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, you think you, when you're young, you think you're working hard. You think you're doing uh, everything you can do. Um, you can always do more. Even when you, think you can't do more, you can always do more. Mm. So in that aspect, that's what I would tell the basketball player. Um, so Braylon can hear that. But <laughs> um, the person, I would have said, stay closer. And that means I should have stayed closer to Max Apple and I should have stayed closer in FCA and stayed closer to Christ because I watch and – the reason I'm excited about Kentucky basketball next year has nothing to do with the basketball court. It's because of what the National Player of the Year is going to be able to do and say in Oscar. And yep. what he's doing is what I wish 
I would have been able to do and mm -hmm. I had the strength to do and I had the knowledge and wisdom to do back then because like Josh said, we have an amazing platform. Yeah. Like being a Kentucky basketball player, you reach so many people yeah. and to be able to spread the gospel uh, the way, and I'm not putting any more pressure on Oscar, you know, I'm just saying yeah. that the way that he's represented himself and represented Christ is the way that I wish we all could have done mm -hmm. that because the more people know that putting on this jersey is great, it was phenomenal, we had a great time, you know, it doesn't do anything for you. Mm -hmm. The only person that does anything and the only relationship that matters is the one that you have with Christ. Mm -hmm. And being an example for him, staying close to him, would uh, would have led, you know, I, I'm here where I am right now for a reason. And I, I didn't do it back then, but now still being able to have that jersey on, we still have the platform, like yeah. you say. So we're still able to go back and hopefully repair that and say, this is what I should have been doing. Sure. Tell these people, the young kids listening, this is the way to go mm -hmm. because ultimately that's the way you want to live your life. When you think of your relationship with Jesus and how you've grown since since you were in college playing ball at UK, what, what's the biggest difference you see in yourself now that, that Jesus has made in your life? Mm -hmm. So I, I would say, you know, I've <clears throat> certainly continued to mature and develop that relationship over time and, I think I think one thing that really stood out to me, you know, there was a pretty big transition at some point, you know, in my early thirties, is that you know maybe I even do less talking and more listening. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, you know, there's a book I read. It's called Two Chairs, and the premise of the book was, you know, every morning this guy would sit a chair across from him, and he imagined that that was Jesus in the chair, and they would just have a conversation. And <clears throat> I kind of think of my relationship with Jesus. I heard a guy recently talk about, you know. Christians are terrible salespeople. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and he would, you know, I kind of agree. I'm not big on religion and the, uh, you know, the legalistic things that come with, but man, Jesus mm -hmm. really big on him mm -hmm. and that relationship. And I heard one somebody once put it said, "Look, let's just say the guy you look up to most in the world, Elon Musk, LeBron James, you just name it. And he and he's willing to mentor you for six weeks every morning, every Tuesday at seven a.m." How excited would you be? Eh, pretty excited. Mm -hmm. If Warren Buffett's willing to sit down with me for yeah. once a week, probably wouldn't be late. Yeah, listen. And so the <laughs> point was like, so now you're telling me that the God that created Elon Musk and Warren Buffett and LeBron James is willing to sit down with you every morning mm -hmm. and actually have a relationship and mentor you along the way? So for me, sitting in that meeting with Jesus in the morning and just, Lord, do you see me? Yeah. And I hear him say, man, I'll never leave you. You know, do you, are you big enough to handle what I'm going through? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I walked on water. Mm -hmm. I turned, <laughs> I made the blind see it. I think, and what's the plan? And then just listening to him guide me in the word of where, mm -hmm. I, where, I, where I were on to go. And that's been a big mm -hmm. difference for me. But when I missed the meeting too many mornings in a yeah. row, mm -hmm. it's funny how these old things creep back yeah. in. And so the consistency of sitting down in that chair and being with the real thing, I think for me has been kind of the biggest difference in my transition. Yeah, two things for me, and, and I have 10 sales reps that uh, that report to me, and, and I, I talk a lot about control what you can control mm -hmm. and try not to worry about what you can't. And so, uh, you know, I think a lot of people can resonate with that control freak inside of everybody a little bit. And, yeah. you know, there, there's some things that we can do, but there's a lot of things we need to turn over to God. And there's a lot of things in the business world like we shouldn't worry about because it's going to negatively impact our business or you as an individual. And I think the other thing, too, is prioritizing your time. I mean, relationships are everything. And I have two young boys and a wife mm. and um I want to make sure I prioritize time with Jesus. I want to make sure I'm prioritizing my time with my wife and my two kids and, and, and in, in that order. Yeah. Uh, because if I do it in that order, everything kind of seems to fall in place. When I don't do it in that order, things can get a little chaotic on me. Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm not, I'm not perfect. I'm still working on that. Mm -hmm. Um, but prioritizing of the time, making the time, um, spending the time mm -hmm. you will reap benefits. Mm -hmm. Have I not answered this one yet? All right. Um, <laughs> Wake up. I don't know. I, listen, I'm just engrossed. I'm Josh just like, put you to sleep. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. It's just, uh, I'm just thinking, like, it, 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 it's amazing. Like JP said, like, when you spend the time and you 
keep the main thing the main thing. It's amazing how by spending that time and having that conversation in the morning, how you everything everything throughout the rest of your day is different. Mm-hmm. And it's not it doesn't mean that, oh, everything is great. No. I mean, it can still go really, really bad. Mm-hmm. It's just the fact that when you spend that time and you are close and you're connected and you have that relationship, you handle everything so much differently mm. and you feel everything so much differently. And it's not, um, it's nothing that you can learn. It's something that you have to develop in, and mm-hmm. in, in that relationship. And, you know, the more you're immersed in the word, the more you read the Bible, the more you understand and the closer you are to him, it's, it's almost like, you know, you can grab somebody when they're close and pull you back. And, and that's what he does. Like, when you have something bad happen to you during the day, if you've already been in close contact with him, if you're close enough for him to grab you, it's like he grabs you and it's like, yo, 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 hey, mm. don't forget. Yeah. You know, don't forget who you are. Don't forget what this is all about. Yeah. And by keeping that relationship and waking up in the morning and spending that time, it does make your day better. Yeah. And that's it's interesting, it. the simplicity of what you guys are saying. Yeah. You know, it's, it's simple, not easy, you know, but, yeah. but simple. And it will make huge difference in your life over the course of time. It's the best game plan we've ever had. Mm. Everybody has it. Mm -hmm. And everybody has it walking around. Everybody has a phone. Everybody has the Bible with them at all times because nobody's walking around without a phone. Right. And it would be amazing what would happen if we read the verse of the day instead of got on Instagram Mm. or we we, (laughs) we just started reading a book in the the Bible instead of getting on Snapchat and snapping for 30 minutes. Right. But if you do those things... Just wait and see. And and this is, I, I promise you, this yeah. is a change that will happen. It mm-hmm. will occur if you yeah. just spend the time with the Word. It's a lot of similarities to athletics there, right? Like yeah. If you, if you put in the time, you will see some changes yeah. over time, but you got to put in the time. You got to do it. Speaking of time, I want to honor your all's time, but I want to make sure we do a few fun things here before we uh, before <laughs> we go. Not that this hasn't been fun. It's been very, very <laughs> fun. But I want to throw out a few kind of fun questions for you. You know, us UK fans, we always are curious and things like that. So we want to know some stuff. So maybe this will create some argument amongst you. I don't know. But uh, best basketball player you ever played with or against? And I probably asked you this on the podcast, Robbie. Yeah, so we'll see if you're go. consistent with your answer. Go we'll, ahead. we'll check the notes from a couple of years ago. I know. <laughs> I'm going to say Tayshaun Prince. Really? Okay. I'm going right. to say Tayshaun. And the reason I do is, uh, you know, I try to guard the guy a lot in practice. <laughs> how, do you, how do you guard him? He's 6'9". <laughs> he, 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 he takes you to the post. Yeah. And then a big guy wants to guard him. He takes him to the perimeter. Mm. So he was just a – he was a – a matchup nightmare. He's so fun to watch. That was man. so skilled. Yeah, and you think about a guy like that who did not lift weights. And if <laughs> he, he didn't look like he if, lifted if weights. The, if the guy would have got a little strong, this guy, you know, made a hundred million dollars, played, you know, a great fourteen career, years yeah. in the NBA. Great team. But just to think about if he would have gotten a little stronger, yeah. how much better he could have been. Yeah. And he was great. Yeah. The, the the North Carolina game is the one that you know oh, everybody yeah, always yeah, likes everybody to remember knows. those. Pulling yeah. up from the from about half court, you know, yeah. six threes. He had six in that game. He had five in a row. Five in a row. So yeah. Yeah. My game. wife was yeah. at that Insane. game. I was watching somewhere else yeah. is when we were dating. Yeah. Insane. I like to think it was the assists that were going to him. Ah, yeah. yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who was delivering it's not hard to pass it, it to somebody at half court and say, shoot <laughs> it. Court, yeah. <laughs> Let's go back. I think he rebounded it, brought it up the court, shot it. Oh, so, yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Unassisted. The last one. Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, Tay, t- you know, Tay's my guy. We were the same class. You know, look, that, that man's won an NBA title. He's an Olympic gold medalist. Yeah. I don't think we can have the debate too long mm-hmm. on, you know, as far. Uh, but Jason Williams from Duke, um, sure. you know, as far Jay, as playing so again, he yeah, was, yeah. he could go when he, man. before his accident. And, yeah. man, that dude was strong. He elevated on his jumper. He could, he released it high, but he was powerful in the paint. I mean, he could get to where he wanted. That dude, he that could dude could go. He could, he yeah. could go. So that, that would yeah. probably be. Too. Jay will hit me with an elbow at camp one year, and uh, it it left him. I was a fre- I was a, going into my senior year of high school, so I was about a buck sixty. Oh, and he yeah. hit me with an elbow in, in camp uh, when I was down there, and it I felt it for about two Break weeks. Break a rib? Yeah, yeah, it hurt. He was he was he was amazing. Um, but I I think I said mellow. And I'm gonna stay with mellow, stay with man. Because I mean, mellow was he was special. I mean, oh, he's man. so big and he was so strong, and he could just it. It was just he could do it all, man. Yeah. So Melo was probably the best player that I played against. Yeah. Uh, game that you just look back at and go, man, that when I look back and go, most fun game I ever played in. What was mm. what would you say that was? 
What you got? Um, so I, you know, I look, there was a game in my sophomore year, you know, Michigan state had won it the previous year. This was oh, Mateen Cleaves yeah, and Mo, Mo Peterson yeah, yeah. and they came to rough Flintstones. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the next year. Um, and, um, yeah, I think they had, they had beat us in the elite eight mm-hmm. the prior year. So it was a little bit of revenge and their national champ. So Rupp was pretty hype mm-hmm. and. I hit four threes in that game. I hit one late to put us up one, and that was a fun one mm-hmm. to go home. with. Christmas break was after yeah, that, so yeah. got to celebrate beating those guys and having a good game. Yeah, that, that one for me was probably one. one that stands out. Yeah, that's a big one. That was fun. Oh, man, when you, uh, Louisville when we came back from what were you down nineteen at half? Was that came with back, Sparks too? Where yeah, he had a big shot. That was yeah. a, that was a good one. That mm. I'd say that one, that one, that one's probably the most fun. Uh, and then the most most intense was that Cincinnati game, our junior year, my junior oh, year, your senior. Yeah. Remember that Cincinnati wow. game in Indianapolis? Yeah, that was a that was an intense Dog atmosphere. Fight. Man, yeah. those boys were so physical. Huggins and, coaching them. Yeah, yeah, that's when Huggy was there, and they had James <laughs> James White. Is James mm-hmm. White there? James White, yeah, because I tried to foul him. And he took off from like the free throw line, and That'd he missed the dunk. Oh, Lord, but man, <laughs> that was a uh, golly. Yeah, I'd, I'd say those two were probably the most fun. I didn't make any big shots or anything, but did two of you play with Kalena? <laughs> oh, we both played. Yeah, with yeah, 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 man, what an athlete! Golly. Good night. I, I, th- that's a great question, and we could talk for thirty minutes <laughs> on, on that. There, there were so many special moments, and uh, you know, we are everybody's Super Bowl. No matter who mm, we're playing, right. if we could play Northern Kentucky or we can play Louisville, mm. and they're going to bring it. And mm. so, a, a few that stand out to me is Rick Pitino's very first year with Louisville. Mm. He came back mm. to Rupp I Arena. In, I was in the arena. Uh, very, there. very hostile environment. He I, snuck I, out of the other tunnel. Remember? He, he, he did. He did. He, he kind of uh, came around and, and, and tricked everybody. He mm. knew what he was doing, but mm. um, but that was a that was a cool atmosphere. I played the last four minutes of the game, hit a three-pointer. Mm. Uh, another one was the Louisville game at Louisville. We were down. Uh, Sparks got fouled in the corner yeah. uh, and, and hit three big free throws. But mm. to finish that game, it, like the last seven or eight minutes, it was Ravi, myself, Sparks, so three Kentucky boys, mm-hmm. and then Kalena and Chuck. So yeah. we were playing small ball. But yeah. but we finished that game out, sure and, um, and, and that, that was pretty special being – that over half the lineup in was from Kentucky. So that yeah. was cool. And then the last one for me was senior night. And that was one, it was the only start of my career. I knew coming in like, all right, I've got, yeah. I've got time. I'm going to get some time yeah. here. I'm, I'm going to start the game. I'll get, you know, four or five minutes. Mm-hmm. And depending on how I do, I might, I might play career high in points, career high in minutes. <laughs> uh, you know, Rondo's the point guard and he's telling me like, be ready to shoot it. I'm yeah. throwing it to you. And so, yeah. Um, that that was pretty special to to show like the fans like number one thank you for for sticking with me thank yeah. you for the appreciation and look I could actually play if you yeah. give me some minutes here you yeah. know so <laughs> you know, when you talk about that Louisville game uh, this goes back to my dad so uh, when he hit that shot my my daughter was like in like a little bouncy seat or something like that she was a baby he like took his hat off threw it against the wall and yelled and you know and she just started screaming crying I thought my <laughs> Wife was going to kick him out of the house, you know, the whole, the whole nine yards. But I, re- oh, I remember that man. one, too. Yeah, yeah. That was so uh, most grueling practice experience, anything that, like, stands out or just anything you yep. just knew, like, oh, man, mm-hmm. it's going to be a bad practice today and coach is going to do this to us. Robbie's got one. <laughs> yep. We, my freshman year, we lost a Louisville my freshman year, didn't we? We lost it. We lost when Bogues was a senior, did we lose the Louisville? Was it Louisville or Indiana? It was your sophomore year. My, that was my sophomore year? Mm-hmm. No. No, it was Bo. It was my freshman year. Your sophomore year. We lost it. Because we lo- that was the year we lost to Athletes in Action or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I think because we didn't get going. We didn't get going until Vanderbilt, remember? We yeah. lost. I think we lost to Louisville that year. Yeah, that Vandy game was the and turning point. Yeah, That's right. Yeah. yeah. And but we had practice. Like shortly after that, but it was over Christmas break, <laughs> and it was I was a freshman, so you know I was I was not my body wasn't all the way there yet, and I remember those practices were that was some tough practices, man. That were that little span when we had to go six a.m. and when it's dark when you wake mm. up and you go over there and then you leave practice and it's already dark, dark again. again, yeah, four yeah. thirty. Yeah. That was those were some dark times, man. yeah. Oh, yeah. And I wasn't playing either. Right, <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 man. And if you guys like throw up when you run, or are you that kind of? 
I there there was I, a few early. I mean, they try to break you when you yeah. get there, right? Like those first few workouts, they want to let you know, yeah. like, hey, you it's, this is this is. An, I didn't throw up, but I was standing by the <laughs> trash can for a long time. <laughs> Did you throw up? <laughs> no. Yeah, but, Josh was. He was like, oh no. no. <laughs> I, I shake my head because uh, the practices, you know, you never know what you're going to get. You know, yeah. you, you lose. You could come back and we practice 30 minutes and get out, or mm. we could grind it out for three hours and just beat up on each other. So you never knew what you're going to get. But oh. for me, the preseason conditioning program, it oh. could have been a lot worse, but just mentally what that did to me, you know, we would like run yeah. we would like run yeah. a mile and a half to yeah. the track and then run the track and then run back. and yeah. Better to and just play basketball, I'm right? telling you, yeah. I'm not a track athlete. Yeah. I'm not, and, 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 I didn't get a scholarship and, for this. And these guys, like, <laughs> like Rob, Robbie's laughing because he can attest to this. They, they, was would ugly? Some, they, would <laughs> they would put us in a van to take us to the track, and I'm in the back just Brutal. sweating my head down. And, and I'm the only and, one that was like, like oh, And he was in bed at 8.30 the night before. <laughs> <laughs> Got to get my sleep, man. Got to get my sleep. <laughs> Love it. Yeah. Love oh, it. man. That van ride, boy. You knew oh. it was just death warmed over riding out to the track. You it knew was, it was yeah. about to be on. You know, you want to see some, some oh. faces. <laughs> it was man. the first mile. The, the first mile that you had to do when you first came back, when you had yeah. to make the six-minute oh, yeah. one, the six-minute mile, yeah. when you mm. hadn't worked out in a while, mm. that one was the tough one. Yeah. yeah. 530 was all right, but the six-minute one Oof. crushed me. Yeah, uh, yeah. last one, biggest, scariest dude, like meanest dude. You didn't, you just didn't want to mess with. You either played with or against. So that one's easy, you know. Jamal McGlure, <laughs> you know, man. Look, this is such a layup <laughs> question. You know, that guy was a riot, and everything that you think about that guy is exactly how he was <laughs> off the court too. So you have to understand. I watched this man. We were playing Miami in the NCAA tournament. I think they were the Red Hawks. This was Wally Zerbiak. Oh, yeah. Oh, Miami yeah. of Ohio. And, yeah. and this yeah. was a really competitive. I mean, we're in the NCAA tournament, right? Yeah. You know, this is pretty yeah. serious stuff. Yeah. Wally Zerbiak. Game mm -hmm. is like tied at half. And yeah. we're running off. And Jamal, <laughs> the, the Red Hawk, was standing like by the tunnel. <laughs> and he puts his arm out and just clotheslines the Red Hawk. <laughs> And the Red Hawks hat goes flying, and like the Red. <laughs> so we're running in, and we're like, "What are you doing?" Everybody's yeah. laughing, man. And, and then we come back out of the locker room, and they've got the paramedic is down oh with the Red Hawk, gosh. and I'm like, "What did you?" <laughs> so anyway, that's who that guy was. That's though. amazing. That's who he did not care. He oh, would warm up on God. the other team's end just to make him mad. just mix it up, just to make him. He going to block a shot when the play just to. Yeah. That dude, that dude was something else. He Played was a long riot. time in the NBA too. Yeah, long, long career. Time. Yeah, <laughs> long career. Oh, jam, <laughs> man, that guy was something. So, so one that I played with was, you know, only um, only got one year with him, but Rashad Carruth was oh, one. Yeah. And you know, he was one. We we came in. He was a McDonald's All American. I'm a you know Kentucky yeah. kid. We're, we're both fighting for minutes, and so he literally would fight you, you know, mm. like we're running down the court and, you know, I'm running the lane and he's literally on the other side of the court and I'm getting to half court. And next thing you know, he's coming with a fist and an elbow, like as I'm running the lane. And, wow. And just like, <laughs> I mean, no, nobody was telling that guy anything. Like <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. funny guy. Like, and, and, and we actually, that was early on. Um, but I didn't back down. Yeah. And I think that he, he gained some respect, uh, from me through that. But, yeah. But you know, look, we're compete. Everybody's competing for minutes, yeah. and mm -hmm. uh, and those minutes are hard to come by. So mm -hmm. uh, you saw some funny stuff out there. And then an opposing player it might be more annoying than <laughs> than being uh, maybe a bruiser. But like Joe Kim Noah yeah. oh, was yeah. just annoying yeah. as all get out. Imagine. And yeah. if I could have been six ten and, yeah. and been able to bang around a little yeah. bit, I, I would have. Yeah. <laughs> we would have all cheered for you in that, in that <laughs> endeavor so for tough. sure. Yeah. But for you, Robert. Man, I, I, Joe Kim was a he yeah. was a dude. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't like him at all. But I would have loved to play with him probably. Yeah. But that's not, he's one of those guys. Yeah. That's Demarcus Cousins, right? Like yeah. you don't want to play against him, but if he's yeah, on, your, on team. your team. He's yeah. good, man. I I just remember uh, we were down at Alabama my freshman year, and I think Alabama was number one overall that year. Mm. And uh, uh, we beat them, and we we're running off, we we're flapping our jerseys, and some dude threw a poster down, and it hit me at the side of my head. And I was like, dang. And it was like the pointy part. You know? <laughs> and, I, and, like, I got to the locker room. I started bleeding in the locker yeah. room. And at the time, I was like, what? And Bogues was running behind me, and Bogues saw it. 
And he looked up there and he stopped. And he's like, hold on. He picked up the sign and ripped it up. He's like, here you go, big fella. Come on, man. And I was like, yeah, appreciate you, Bogues. Way, way to have my back, man. So Bogues was always a tough guy for, for me. So I, uh, yeah, he was he was my guy. That begs one last question. Place mm-hmm. you hated to play, place you loved to play, place you just didn't want to go to. Tennessee. Tennessee yeah. hated it. Tennessee. <laughs> Robbie loves Tennessee. All right, yeah, Tennessee. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I hated Tennessee. Tennessee. I, I still, that's the only, when I say I hate the school, that's the only, you're not supposed to say that. I hate Tennessee. Yeah. I hate them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We've got a couple Tennessee guys on staff, and he gets yeah. mad. He's like, why don't? Why have you not fired them? Well, I don't like, know why <laughs> Listen, I know God loves Rod, everyone. Man. Rod Butler is your friend, and oh, he's a Tennessee gosh, guy. So, that's, yeah. he's, a, he's a great call, man. Call him out on this podcast. The, the, gosh, Rod, make a better decision. <laughs> So Tennessee for you, Tennessee for you. Play. And so at, at Florida was you, know, Ooh, you yeah. could, but especially you know, those that area, students yeah. are like on top of you. They got yeah. half the floor, yeah. and like yeah. you, you literally couldn't hear coach one one mm-hmm. foot from him. Like it was, great it was, place. it was on yeah. down place. there. But uh, I love playing at Freedom Hall. Like that was a that was a shooter's gym. Yeah, like you can say what you want, but there are gyms where the backdrop and the ball and the lighting and like that was a shooter's well, gym. You guys probably played in the state tournament back when it was rotating between Rupp in in freedom hall didn't you or did you still did you go to the state tournament well, yeah we didn't get there okay you okay. know a little bit okay. like, we couldn't right. get there way to rub that in sorry guys yeah, my yeah. bad <laughs> you i thought i was yeah. i thought i was uh, no. healed from all you, you could have been there if you're better i don't know <laughs> walk on uh, <laughs> well they used to rotate between freedom hall yeah. and rub and it I was all that. everybody always talked about how it was a much better shooters gym oh, than, yeah. than rub yeah, I played in a few All Star games there, and then we played there uh, when oh, I was yeah. in college, and I always loved that gym. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, Freedom Hall was a good gym. Well, fellas, in in all seriousness, proud of all of you. Grateful for your friendship, and this this conversation will benefit a lot of a lot of fellas out there. So, thanks for joining us today, and and thank thank you for being willing to share some of your stories, and proud of all of you. So, thanks, man. All right, it's awesome. Man. We'll see you next time on Locker Room. 